Good morning and, and thank you. It is really a how far can we go and quite a challenge to give a geopolitical outlook in 10 minutes, but I will try it. And I think if it can't be done in a short way, it's not done in a good way. I'm really delighted to be here in Krakow, which used to be one of the important European capitals. And at that time, Poland was one of the powerful players in European politics, a big stabilizing factor and actually protecting Europe also from the East. And if we talk about geopolitics, I think the case of Poland and the missing of Poland in the 19th and, 20th and early 20th century was one of the big reasons that Europe fell into the two disasters of World War I and World War II. And I think it's now important that Poland again plays a big role in the European sphere. Coming down to geopolitics, what, what do we want to do with geopolitics? We want to look on what happens and then see what does it mean for the future and also what does it mean for us? What are the impacts of the power shifts? We had in the last 20 years, I would say in general, very positive uh, de developments. The breakup of the Soviet Union um, made the world independent of the uh, bipolar power play between the US and the uh, Soviet Union. At the same time, markets opened and so new players uh, appeared on the global stage. Now, new players means also tectonic shifts and that means also disruptions. And we have now to deal with these disruptions, which can be, in general, moving forward is good, but it can be da uh, dangerous. In order to, uh, to understand politics, one has to understand uh, business and economics. One has to understand technological de uh, developments. But one also has to understand the power play, historic, cultural reasons, geographical reasons, and so on. Uh, the US system, which protected us for quite a long time and kept peace for the last 20 years, is now challenged by new players for right or wrong reasons. China mostly has big ambitions to become also an hegemonial power, which um, creates problems with their neighbors and involves the United States. What is also dangerous is that we have raising powers, which is less dangerous, but also declining powers. Russia is a typical declining power, but which, which wants to regain the role of a leading power and get some support from China on that. Not that it's a love affair, but uh, they have some, some common interests. What touches Europe a lot now is the relationship to, uh, to Russia, and that uh, touches Central Europe especially. I think it's important to understand the, the, the drivers. Western politics has become uh, quite strongly value-driven, or to say it's, it's value-driven, which also means that other countries feel that um, what are called Western values will be, for, be, will be forced of them. Russia is very touchy on that. On the other side, uh, Russia is afraid of its long borders and likes to have a cordon sanitaire around it. That means a cordon sanitaire means they want to have countries which are semi-dependent. The situation we have now and I could talk very long about it, but, but, but in short is we have Russia with ambitions, we have Russia with fears. And how does Russia handle that? On one side, there's one thing where Russia is, is stronger than, than Europe, that's the military power, and they, therefore they talk about that. A second thing is they use hybrid warfare in all uh, uh, different means on uh, in, in surrounding areas. I don't think that the response which is done by, uh, by, the, by the US and by Europe is adequate in, enough. There is on one side in, in, in insulting uh, Russia, on the other side maybe the, the defense uh, view is, is, not, is not enough seen. 
what, what we have is now, we know we have this uh, between frozen and open war in Ukraine. We have uh, hybrid or preparation of hybrid warfare towards the Baltics. We have um, unrest in the, in the Balkans, which is linked to that. And we have also an extremely difficult position in Moldova, which basically has already since 20 years a Ukraine-like situation with parts of uh, their country being split off and being very close to Russia. Unfortunately, I see that this tension between uh, West and Russia in this area will unfortunately continue. We have an, uh, and another sign of that is we will have in one month, there will be common uh, naval maneuvers between Russia and China and the Mediterranean, which is a very clear sign of going on. Second scene which we have is, is Europe to the south. Uh, we have a very disruptive uh, Africa, we have a very disruptive Middle East. We will have to face a very strong immigration from the, from the south, and we can't, even we say we bomb certain boats, we, we will stop that. We will not be able, just by the sheer quantity of people who want to come into Europe, to stop it. Um, what we have to do in Europe is, we have to see what are we going to do. And I think the political response of quotas is not go good enough. I think there can only be a business response. A way, how can we integrate these people into, into our workforce? I know it is politically very un unpopular, but I think there will be no other choice of doing it. Very important for our European subsistence is how we handle our own affairs. And I think but with all criticism to the European Union, we could be a, a lot worse. Important is, however, that our close relationship with the United States and North Atlantic states on the military, on the NATO way remains, but also on the economic way. And I think, therefore, uh, projects like uh, TTIP um, are important and we hope that they will be done and they will be also done in a, a proper way. To put it short, unfortunately, through these tectonic shifts which we have, which gives a lot of opportunities because business is unleashed in Asia, uh, there is also um, towards the whole business region of the North Atlantic that develops a big Pacific and Indian Ocean business regions, which is, which is, very, which is uh, very positive. Technology develops, and I think the important thing is to understand how politics are developing, how that goes, so that, um, that the technology, technological and business development is not too hampered. And I want to close with something, a very wise thing Ronald Reagan had said, and that applies not only to local politics, but also to, to global politics. What is the most threatening word you can, uh, you can receive? That is, a lady or a gentleman, elegantly dressed, coming towards you and says, I'm coming from government, I have a solution for you. Thank you.